Hello, my name is Leslie Kendall. I'm the chief historian of the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. And we're here to talk about million dollar cars, in particular, one million dollar car, our 1913 Mercer. We wanna talk about what makes it worth so much money and why so many people really, really would like to have one. This 1913 Mercer is probably one of the most um, significant early cars. And what makes it worth so much money, uh, well into a million dollars, is the fact that it's, it's a beautiful car. It's high performance. It cost a lot of money when it was new. It uh, was built to very low tolerances. In other words, it's a high quality car. And it's a very low production. They estimate that only about 250 of these were built over a four year span of time. A lot of people look at a million dollar car and they say, well, can I drive it? Um, is, is this just something I can take out on the road and have a little bit of fun with? And most 1911, 12, 13, 14 cars, you can't. But this Mercer, you can. You can actually take this on the road. You can throw it into a corner. You can have a little bit of fun with it, not too much fun, uh, and get an authentic 1913 driving experience. Part of what makes this car so interesting is the charm that age brings with it. Uh, it's a car that requires more driver involvement than most modern cars today, than any modern car today. Uh, in fact, when you start it, you have to go through a six or eight per, uh, step procedure, depending of course on uh, whether you live in a snowy climate and it's January, or you live on the West Coast and it's August, uh, depending on how warm or cold it is. Also, if you drive at night, um, you're gonna wanna turn on your headlights, but it's not just a matter of reaching down the dashboard and pulling a switch. Uh, you have to open the headlight lenses and light them with the match after you turn on the Presto light tank. Presto light is a gas, a very flammable gas that burns a bright white. Uh, and headlights properly silvered will throw a beam as far as you can imagine. You also have cowl lights that make driving, again, a little bit interesting. It brings, it, brings an authentic motoring experience to the proceedings. Uh, you open the, the side and you light the wick because you have already put kerosene in the little kerosene pot down, down at the bottom. Uh, and then you adjust the wick to determine the intensity of the light. So this is a car that, that has an awful lot going for it. And I think most people would consider this one of America's first sports cars. Keeping in mind that sports Sporting cars are meant to be driven, not necessarily ridden in. The whole idea about driving as a sport is to feel the road, is to feel the car, muscle the car around corners, uh, experience uh, the interaction uh, with, with the machine from the day. This car offers all of that. Looks good going down the road and everybody, virtually everybody knows what a Mercer is. So you've got that name recognition too. Something that makes this car especially important is the fact that it's so original. Uh, it's probably one of the most original Mercer raceabouts in existence today. And when you think that after more than a hundred years for a car to be mostly untouched is absolutely outstanding. There was a time during the 40s or 50s when these cars were becoming very, very valuable that people would routinely take them, tear them apart, uh, paint them, re refinish the metal um, and put them all back together. And they looked great, but they weren't original. They weren't as they were when they came out of the Mercer factory in Trenton, New Jersey. But here you have a car that is entirely original, uh, except it was repainted once, we believe, during the 50s, but that's it. Um, the fenders are original. In fact, the numbers match. The fender numbers match the body number. Uh, it's, you can tell that this car has led a very, a very charmed life. A lot of that time in Southern California. Opening the hood of the Mercer gives you an idea of just what you were getting for your money and today what you would be getting for your money if you were lucky enough to, to find one of these for sale. A T-head four-cylinder engine, about five liters, about 300 cubic inches. Gigantic engine, a 
thumping, ground-pounding engine that had so much torque. You also had a transmission that was shifted on the outside. Even the accelerator pedal was on the outside of the car. That's how narrow the passenger compartment was. And that also gives you an indication of, of the sporting nature of the car. Uh, this Mercer happened to be a four-speed. Not that you would need four speeds uh, in 1913, because by the time you got to um, fourth gear, you probably had run out of road, keeping in mind that in 1913, there were still horse trails. Um, there were still primarily dirt roads uh, that you were driving on, except when you got into the cities or close to major metropolitan areas of the time. Uh, but, but here you had a vehicle that was more than up to the task. Um, and you were on display for everybody to see and admire, just like you would be today if you were to be lucky enough to have one of these. One thing that you'll notice immediately upon approaching this car is its stance and just how low it was. And for 1913, this was the Lamborghini of its day. This is a car that was so low and, and so sleek and so sexy that uh, people would, would swoon when they saw one. Um, you, you couldn't help but look dashing in this car. And keep in mind that it was low for a reason. It wasn't low just to look good, although that certainly helps. It was low to, to help in the cornering. And Mercer took a lot of that from its road racing experience. Uh, they embodied everything they knew, uh, almost everything they knew about uh, racing, about performance, about cornering uh, in this car. Now you could get a Mercer that was a, uh, a, a, theoretically you could get a sedan, you could get a touring car. Those would have been higher. And of course, performance would have suffered because they would have been heavier and less aerodynamic. Not that this car is especially aerodynamic, but you had a gigantic, if you had a gigantic body, then, then uh, you would compromise your, your, your streamlining considerably. Here you have a, a vehicle that, uh, the, 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 an exotic car, a supercar, a hypercar of his day, if you will, uh, and one of America's first sports cars. Thank you everybody for watching. Be sure and hit the like button and subscribe.